Oh boy. So yesterday we made a video talking about Edmonton Oilers first round pick Philip Broberg. We went over the profile, we went over the story, and we also talked about how apparently he wants out. There was an entire idea floating around saying that Broberg and his camp got permission to seek a trade because the guy felt like his entire tenure with the Edmonton Oilers was not acceptable. And this conclusion, for the most part, was one that Oilers fans could sympathize with. Hey, this is a really talented young player with a lot of tools that wasn't really being given a chance, and because the Oilers have themselves a team now where they're looking for defensemen that could help them out, the fact that Broberg is still here, sitting on the sidelines waiting to get his chance, could be seen as very frustrating right? So yesterday's video kind of went over everything there. We had talked about the other situations. We had talked about the other players taken after Broberg in the draft. It was a pretty big thing. But I wanted to make a follow-up video to this entire situation because it's apparent that the entire story is just getting uglier. You see, after we made the video talking about Broberg and his camp getting the permission to seek a trade, we had ourselves a tweet made by Ryan Rashog saying this, that Ken Holland says he has not granted permission for Darren Ferris to shop for a Broberg trade. Ken Holland says, I have not granted permission for Darren to shop Broberg. You then had yourselves, Ryan Rashog, asking Darren Ferris about this, and Ferris's response says, This matter reflects both my and my client's frustration with the Oilers. I'm actively collaborating with Ken to address and resolve the issue privately. Rashog says, clearly, there are major issues here between this first-round pick and the organization. They have spoken multiple times in recent days, and things seem to have boiled over with today's development. Now, this is something that I don't think I've ever seen before, where we have ourselves the rumors coming out about a guy who has been given permission to seek a trade, only for the team's executives to come out flatly and say, wait a minute, no, no he didn't, that's not the case here, that's not right. Because completely contradicting statements rarely happen in the media, especially when it comes to trade-related material like this. We had talked about the other day how Tyson Berry, Nashville Predators defenseman, also exhibited a similar thing where his agency got the permission to seek a trade. The video earlier today talks about how the Predators' response to that wasn't, no, that's not the case here, but instead was, hey, no, the Predators are disappointed. Barry Trotz was disappointed in how the entire trade thing was handled because they definitely didn't leak that information to the media. But now this is a completely different thing. The Oilers and the Broberg camp saying completely different statements, and Darren Ferris responding saying, yeah, this is both reflecting my and Broberg's frustration with the Oilers organization right now. There clearly is some bad blood. And with the way Rashog tweets it after, I mean, he says that they've spoken multiple times in recent days, and things seem to have boiled over when we learned about the trade approval. Now, to help us out in this entire conversation, let's go over onto NHLTradeTalk.com because there's an article published from yesterday talking about how the Oilers deny granting Broberg's agent permission to seek a trade. There's a massive miscommunication going on with the Oilers and the agent for Philip Broberg. According to GM Ken Holland, reports of Broberg being granted permission to seek a trade are not true. It sounds like the agent is trying to get permission, but the Oilers have not granted it. If they're going to deny the trade request, where does that leave everyone? One thing's for sure, though, this is not a good look for all parties involved, and it sends a message to teams around the NHL that there may be some issues brewing between the player and the team. That is, unless the agent acted without permission. The article poses a question, who is in the wrong here? If Broberg's agent asked and was denied permission to seek a trade, it's odd that reports would surface that Broberg was allowed to do that. At the same time, if Holland granted it and is now recanting, that's a bad look too. Is it a matter of the Oilers not wanting this to go public, or did the agent misunderstand? Broberg was at practice today with the Oilers and looked in good spirits. The hope here is that this doesn't affect him if the agent and the GM are not on the same page. And I think the article sums it up pretty nicely here. We have no idea who is in the right, who is in the wrong, or who's making a fumble here. If the agent's understanding was that, yeah, we were given permission to seek a trade, then they have no reason to go out there and lie about it, right? If that's the case, then Ken Holland is the one going out here and saying the contradictory statements. He's the one going back in his word. 
But if Ken Holland is right, and they didn't actually give Broberg and his parties to find a trade partner, then what the hell's the agent going out there and talking about this for? At the very least, our newest update did say that they're trying to resolve things behind closed doors and resolve things privately, but at the same time, you have to acknowledge that part of the reason this is even a big deal and it's public in the first place is because somebody leaked it, and it most likely wasn't Ken Holland. Again, referring back to that Tyson Berry situation, Barry Trotz himself for the Nashville Predators said, Hey, we weren't the ones that leaked this. There were only four people on the planet who probably knew this was going on, and it was definitely not us who went out there and spread this information, so make your conclusions as to who spread it. I wouldn't be surprised if all NHL GMs kind of operated in that same type of thing here, because who wants to go out there and leak it themselves to the media? Hey, my player under my hockey team is going to seek a trade. Like, if you're a GM, you want to maximize the amount of capital you're able to get for your assets, and if that type of information leaks, then it becomes more difficult to get as much value as possible, right? Like, it would be against Ken Holland's interest to let other teams know via Elliot Friedman or Frank Saravelli or the media in general that, hey, they're guys available. Like, they want to call these other GMs and say, hey, what do you think about this trade? Do you think maybe Broberg could be of interest to you? Because if you explore the trade that way, it makes it seem more exclusive. It's not like an out in the open type of open market thing. If you try to negotiate with a GM and you try to say an asset that is already like widely available to being open to a trade, then all of a sudden that other GM is going to look at you and say, okay, well, why are you offering me Broberg? That guy's just out there in the open. Everybody can go out there and see that he's there. So why would I bite at that? You lose leverage if you're Ken Holland and this information leaks out. So it is really intriguing to see how this situation has unfolded, but... I mean, at the end of the day, we're probably going to see ourselves a trade soon. There's already a few articles coming out there talking about destinations, and there are some other pieces asking whether or not the Oilers fumbled the Broberg development and whether or not he actually still has the talent to become good. I'm personally on the more... Uh, I don't know what I want to say. Maybe like... I'm like 50% there. I'm like halfway, he could be good. Halfway, he's probably a bust. I don't know. There's just so much development he needs to go through in order to be an effective player. And you also have the notion that Broberg never really was the smartest player to begin with. That was probably the reason why he slipped so far from his top tier spot in the 2019 draft all the way to eighth overall. Sure, you could say he probably deserved to slip even more. That's kind of where I had him, to be honest. Like, I didn't think that he should have been a top eight pick. I probably would have taken the NTD guys and a few other defensemen over Broberg. I mean, it was four years ago, right? But I do remember having Caulfield and Boldy a lot higher than these guys. Trevor Zegras, too. I was super high on all those NTTP players, and in fact, Philip Broberg was, I think, one of the only top prospects we didn't make a Why I Want video about. And there was a very particular reason why. In fact, we made a video talking about the concerns I had with Broberg. So, a lot of the issues that plague his game today were still present back when he was a draft eligible, so... I don't know, is it coachable for him to get out of that slump? Maybe, but it's probably apparent that that's not going to happen with the Edmonton Oilers. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire situation getting as ugly as it has. Ken Holland is contradicting the agent's statements. The agents are going out there and rebuttaling back. Who do you think is going to end up getting Broberg at the end of the day? And who do you think was in the right here? We don't have enough information, I feel, to make a definite conclusion, but if you had to speculate, Holland or Ferris, what's going on? Where do you think the truth lies? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Rolls 9 and bye.